Whether for profit or tax loss, I believe that the patent mill merits a complete investigation. New paragraph. Please find enclosed a clipping in the local paper regarding the recent firing of employees. New paragraph. I wish this report in time for next month's executive committee meeting. Regards, etc., etc., etc. That'll be all, Fletcher. <clears throat> what should we do about uh, Pittsburgh, Mr. Markham? We're due there in two hours. Well, unless just, just call them and tell them we'll be late, that's all. When shall I tell them we'll be there? Oh, Vincent, come in, come in. Uh, Fletcher, we'll get to Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Harry Fletcher, Dr. Markham. How do you do? Excuse me, Vincent. This Harry is my executive assistant. Very good one. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. I've followed your career with interest and admiration. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. I have to be going. Um, good luck with your work, Doctor. S sit down, Vincent. I understand there's some difficulty about getting the money from the Merriman Foundation. Those foundation people, you know, they always change their minds. I never had the money. I lied to you. You lied? I thought that was reserved for the business profession. Are you still willing to finance a mission? Well, I'm not sure, Vincent. I've already instructed the office to find other worthwhile uses for the money. Is the money still available? I am the boss. I suppose I could make the funds available to you again. Of course, there still are these agreements. We both have to sign them. I'll sign them, Kenneth. Just like that? Well, that's the way you want it, isn't it? Well, after our last discussion and the remarks you made about the Kenneth Markham Foundation, I got the impression you'd rather do anything than Connect your life's work with me or my money. Well, I uh, was wrong. That's unimportant. But you were insulting and humiliating. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. But you still believe what you said, don't you? Kenneth, will you just let me have the money? Uh, I'll sign the agreement the way it is. I'll agree to whatever you want. What made you change your mind? I really can't believe that you'd humble yourself for the sake of a few thousand sick Indians in Peru. Kenneth, I'm finished fighting. Just let me have the money, Al. You can add whatever you want to the agreement. Just let me sign it and give me the money. You know, the last time we talked, I said you'd have to beg me for help. Well, what in the world do you think that I'm doing? What, what else do you want me to say? That I'm sorry? And I apologize for hating you. Forgive me for making you an enemy, for keeping up this deadly contest between us. What do you think I'm doing, Kenneth? I am begging you. I'll pay any price that you want. Just help me and, and forgive me. Vincent, please don't kill yourself. Stay here. Don't go to Peru. Take care of yourself. I'll, I'll come back. I'll get everything running smoothly and I'll come back. But don't make it a condition that I have to stop my work. Well, I had no intention of doing that. But you won't come back, brother. And that's all right. I just... Try to live a good long time, will you? Otherwise, who can I compare myself to?
proud to be your brother, Vincent. I've always been proud of that. Because the Markmans would be a pretty odd lot if we ganged up on those patients of yours down there. So, being proud should be sufficient. I have to wear a sandwich board, courtesy of the Kenneth Markham Foundation. I'll have that removed. You don't have to do that. Yes, yes, I do. You know, you can write a letter from Peru. We can keep in touch. Yes. Thank you, Kenneth. You going back alone? Well, Dr. Rossi has turned down my offer. Now, I'm not referring to Rossi. You know that. Claire? She's already served me with divorce papers. I uh, don't think there's much hope. Are you sure? I had a brief meeting with her. I, I, I sort of tested her. I tried to tear you down. and She very angrily and emotionally came to your defense. Me or my work? It's you and your work. I'm not trying to be a matchmaker, Vincent, but I did get the impression that she admires you a great deal. <laughs> yes. Yes, I think that's why Claire married me. And that's probably why I married her. Not exactly a stirring emotion, Kenneth. Boy, I can't believe that's all there was to it. Well, I'm afraid it's true. Do you know, Kenneth, there have been times from a distance when I've envied your life. Liz and the children. <laughs> well, there have been times when your life has looked enviable to me, too. That is, from a distance. What is this? It's a gift of candy for my husband's secretary. I think it's called energy food. Thank you. That's, uh, that's very thoughtful. Well, not entirely. Beware of executives' wives who come bearing gifts. I uh, want to interrupt him in the middle of his work day, and I was hoping that maybe you'd run interference for me. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Mrs. Schuster's here to see you, if you could spare a few minutes. I know. Thank you. You know, sometimes I really wish that the mill were on Glover Street, because then I could honestly say I uh, just happened to be in the neighborhood. Look, you don't need an excuse. I hate to feel like I'm interrupting. Well, I'd tell you if you were. Oh, I know you would. Come on, sit on our sofa. This is the... Uh comfortable social part of the room. Oh, thank you. Where's Kim? Mrs. Chernick was making strudel, and Kim was invited to roll out the dough. Now, that's much more interesting than uh, shopping for Mommy's dinner party. Well, what's the reason for the visit? Oh, come on, David. Does there always have to be a reason? Yes. Okay. There has been a... Uh, a lot of communication among the masses today. Communication? Hmm. Mrs. Chernick. Uh, Mrs. Chernick and the ladies on the morning bus, the checker at the market and myself, and a little eavesdropping on the square by me. I don't follow. Everybody is talking about David Schuster, the gold-plated migratory mercenary executive. Oh, you mean Elliot Carson's letter to the editor, eh? Is that why you're here? Yes, it is. I'm concerned. About a letter from an irate citizen tucked away in the corner of a small town newspaper? <laughs> David, nothing is ever tucked away in a small town newspaper. Everything is read. Well, it's one man's opinion. He certainly has his right to it. Is it one man's opinion? 
The women whose conversations I overheard this morning were furious. They want an investigation of the mill. Now, if you threaten people's bread and butter, they're going to strike back. David, don't take that report to Boston. Oh, don't be so, so melodramatic. I, uh, didn't think I was being melodramatic. Mr. Payton will have read that letter in the Clarion. Stephen Cord will have added his own choice words, I'm sure. The timing is just off. Don't go. Let everything cool off. I'll be the one to decide that. Now, hear me. This is the last I'm going to say on this subject. The letter is an emotional piece, not a rational, factual one. And it won't be taken seriously. Are you saying that Elliot Carson wrote that letter as a personal, vindictive attack? I didn't say that. Well, why then? Because we fired his daughter? You fired her, not we. <laughs> have against you personally. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Your responsibility, Schuster, not just to Martin Peyton, but to this entire community. No radical change ever took place easily. It's going to hurt. I did get that letter you sent to Peru. When I came up here, I knew that you were going to divorce me. Why didn't you tell me? You, uh, been getting along okay with my girl? Get out, Joe. Or don't you have the guts to fight in the open?